What's up, Fungal Associates? Welcome to Completely Arbitrary, the podcast about trees and other related topics. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Alex Croson. I'm a sitting, I'm a sitting alongside, across from the Casey Clap. That's me, Casey Clap. Everyone, welcome to Start Your Engines. <laughs> We're about to take a trip down the California Highway. Wow, maybe beep, we'll beep, drive beep, our beep. car through a tree. Huh, Ooh, Casey? that's destructive, Alex. Well, it's not what you think. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, all right. Uh, hi, Casey. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm okay. How happy, are you? I'm happy to hear that I'm also okay. Great. Uh, this is our, th- should we reveal, pull back the curtain a little bit? Yeah, we should. Take the veil away. This is our second record of the day. Uh, our first record is last week's episode. Yep. The giant sequoia. Sequoia dendron gigantium. That's right. Now, this is a two-parter. That's right, which uh, I'm so excited about. This is our first two-parter. Yes, our first two-parter of the unseason, where we yes. can do whatever the hell we want. This is freedom. Uh, so the two-parter being the giant sequoia and this week's tree, uh, sort of a two-parter of huge trees. That's the theme. Yes, and more specifically, the uh, the rest of it is... Uh, like I wanted to make sure to try to split these two trees apart. I wanted if we did them right next to each other, then we can com- compare and contrast right in front of each other. Yeah, and not have everyone be like, "Oh, yeah, they did a thing on the redwoods." I'm like, no, we did it on the giant sequoia. Right. This one, we're just gonna do both right off the bat, so that way everyone is just gonna be like, "Okay, yeah, they did, they did though that tree, those trees," and then they'll just have to listen to the episodes to figure out, is, are, is it that tree or those trees? <laughs> I don't, thing. I don't know what any of that meant. <laughs> um, I'm very confused right now. But I will say, that, yeah, this is uh, this is part two. Yes. And this week we're discussing another very special big tree. This is Casey, ah. an icon in mm. the tree world. Yes, it is. The Coast Redwood. That's the one. Sequoia Sempervirens. Sempervirens. Yes. Did you hear the difference there? Yes. What does Semper Virens mean? It means evergreen. Okay. Yeah. It actually comes from the same root as, so Virens, green, Semper, ever. Ever, yeah. Uh, that's a Semper Fi. I believe that's the uh, uh, the, the Marines-like thing. Mm-hmm. Semper Fi. It, it means the same thing. I, I think in the Marines, it means something like always a Marine or something like that, or always uh, like, you know, trustworthy. I don't know what it is. But trustworthy. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't mm. remember. But it is, uh, it means essentially forever, always. So right. Semper Virens just means evergreen. So if you ever see anything else that is um, the blank, 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 Semper Virens, it means that it is the evergreen of those things or that. Got thing. it. Yes. Wi Fi, of course, wireless forever. Yeah, it's exactly what that means. <laughs> You're good with etymology, man. Yeah. Wow. I got, I got the knack. As you do. You might yeah, say. you do. You do. Uh, so yeah, the Coast Redwood this week, Casey. And let's imagine. Let's just jump right in. Let's imagine, as we do every episode, that you and I, hey, last week I fumbled and said we were going to walk through uh, an, the Ewok forests of Endor. Mm-hmm. This week, we 100% are walking through the forests of Endor. We're going to jump on our ATST. Yes. We're going to start cruising down, looking for these little hobbit-like creatures that we can explode with our lasers. Yeah. Oh, we're okay. <laughs> we're on the dark side now, <laughs> <Right>. Alex. <laughs> Sorry. So as soon as you jump in the A- I guess, no, we can, we can, we can be the, the, we can be Chewy and, uh, and, and the other homies when they do the, me, 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 me. They, you oh, know, the they, Tarzan yeah, they yell. Yeah, they do the Tarzan yell and yeah. they go into it. Man, George Lucas, why did you do that? Yeah, great creative mind, huh? Ah! <laughs> um, Good one. And we come across some, uh, did I say come across? We yeah. come across mm. some redwoods. And uh, Casey, let's, let's go ahead and ID this huge tree okay so the first thing to know is of course these trees are just as the giant sequoia that we covered the last time massive trees they are huge trees they don't understand how to be small they only know how to be big right which is great because we love that about them so the giant sequoia grows way up at the top of the mountains 4,500 feet in the 
uh, gigantic big uh, Sierra Nevada. Whereas the coast redwood, the topic of today, grows on the coast of California from about Big Sur, the um, uh, Santa Cruz area, like generally that might, what is it, Monterey Bay. Mm. From there natively up north to just beyond the Oregon border. So we technically in Oregon here have what we would call native redwoods, which is kind of one of those things where it's like, oh my God. So we just draw like a literal horizontal line completely arbitrarily and then we decide that, yes, this is now, uh, you know, this is the border, native, not native. So they grow only in a what they call the coastal fog belt. The fog belt. Yeah, you like that? I love it. So it's, uh, you know, like San Francisco's famous for fog and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same place. So it is a essentially that northern California coast that is so beautifully beautifully covered in fog and like what gets all the people to go to california is like yeah california it's great it's like northern california and southern california are like two different vibes entirely yeah totally the redwoods like are the quintessential northern california vibe Mm. and what they do is they grow on the coast almost no more than 30 miles inland like almost just directly along this very skinny line on the coast. And that is because they, for whatever reason, have developed a knack for that super wet, super moist area right there that gets like the brunt of every winter rainfall that comes through. And then during the summertime, they have these gigantic clouds that roll in, this big fog. Redwoods are amazing and specifically adapted to let water condensate on their leaves from these clouds, and they suck it up through their leaves, they get water, as well as it drips down through the forest floor to keep the rest of that area super moist. Hmm. So the fog belt is not just a nice place they live, it is their like means of getting water from the sky and from the ground. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, right? So these 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 uh they like it they like it wet. They like it wet. That's the that's the perfect way to describe it. So um you're walking through this forest and the first thing you're going to notice is exactly that. They are wet. They're super wet. They're very foggy, they're very moist. You're very comfortable. The humidity is high, but not like tropical forest high. You just feel like it's humid there, mm. but it's kind of cool. And you're seeing, again, these gigantic, gigantic monoliths in the distance. But these monoliths are way closer together, and they're perfectly straight all the way up. It just looks like you have a series of like like very tall spires all right in front of you, and you're almost like, I can't even picture, I can't, I can't like focus on one. There's so many of these perfectly straight, just tubes going straight up. Yeah. But each one of those tubes is like no less than... 15 feet in diameter not to mention Jesus. that's like a small forest of them they can get anywhere between like right now the biggest ones are like up to 26 feet in diameter that's so like, around a giant huge. sequoia uh size there. it sure is it's it they are about the same size um funny enough there's contention but historically speaking the coast redwood mm-hmm. would have been the biggest tree Ever. It would have overtaken yeah. General Sherman. So um, the the book that I'm getting a lot of this information from is one we've gotten a lot of information from for our big giants over here on the coast. Right. Forest Giants of the Pacific Coast by Robert ba- Van Pelt. Van Pelt. And what Robert describes in here is that there's, in fact, uh, some big trees. As we talked about in the last episode, the uh, eucalyptus regnans, that there is evidence that there were trees that were taller than 400 feet. Like I said last time, I kind of maybe should have given it more credit. Sorry. Is that like an all-timer size? Yeah. This is like um, when I said the last time, and I'll say again, that people said, yeah, this was the biggest tree. It's over 400 feet tall. Some random loggers said that, but then they never like kept it and like never had other people come out and measure it and be like, yes, mm. official measurement. Let's publish this. It's it, it's real. It's existed. I swear I seen it, they yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. It's like, we cut a tree that was this big. Yeah. So Heard say, that one before, guy. It, exactly. Come on. We, you're not going to pull the wool over our eyes or the fog, mm. but as it works out, Legend has it, and there's no reason not to think it. They're right now growing easily over 330 feet. So it's kind of like, well, what's another 70 feet to these trees? Yeah, you nothing. Know, give them another 100 years, they're going to get there. Easy. Sure. So those trees, the eucalyptus, over 400 feet tall, 
other trees that have grown easily over 400 feet tall, very likely, with, again, the same thing, like the unofficial measurements. Yeah. Douglas fir. Wow. Mm-hmm. Our, our, uh, one of our... Uh, the closest to our hearts. Our cl- 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 an Oregon classic is what I was trying to say. An Oregon classic, Jeez. yeah. A, a whole, uh, just a tree, a, a ecosystem into and of itself. The yes. Douglas fir is spectacular. Apparently, it would have been as tall. There's no reason to suspect that the coast redwoods also were not this tall. And again, let's picture 400 feet real fast. That's like huge. I think, let's look outside. Casey is looking outside. That would go completely across the street and probably cause significant damage to the buildings across the street. Across the street? That's only like 50 feet, no? That's way more than 50 feet, Alex. Maybe I don't know That road, The road itself is probably 60 feet wide. What? From from curb to curb, probably a little more. I don't know about that. Yeah, hey, sorry. It's it's not like you've worked for the city or something. (laughs) Yeah, I'm making all of this up. (laughs) The sidewalks each would be a minimum of 12, probably, so that would, 10, rather. So those are at least 20 feet, so it's probably 80 feet just across the road. Okay. So then if we walk over, like, beyond us a little closer, we can say that's 100 feet. So then if we come from this side of the road across this other road, because we're at like this weird diagonal intersection, uh-huh. then all the way over, maybe we can say that's 200 feet. Okay. So another 100 feet beyond those buildings in the distance, everyone, we're sorry. You're not going to be able to know what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, this is completely. <laughs> but I want you to go outside while you're listening to this. We'll wait. Okay, now that you're outside, yeah. you'll see that, like, go just m- measure something out. Just just go walk for uh, that long, three hundred feet is a football field. If you if you chopped down one of these trees, yeah, at the goalpost, yes, it would the the tips of the branches on the very top would hit the other goalpost. Yes, that is precisely frightening. Frightening, that is so fucking big. Isn't that like it's it's you again? It's it's hard to contemplate. It is, yeah. And anyway, these trees are growing here in this forest. They love the water, deep, luscious soil. Mm. They just go crazy about it. So this is the coast redwood, where it grows, how it grows in these beautiful areas. One of the tallest trees, right now the tallest tree that we have measured and officially given the thumbs up to. But Douglas fir, uh, giant sequoia, and... The eucalyptus, uh, specifically eucalyptus regnans, those are like the, the reigning champions with uh, honorary mention, the uh, Sika spruce. Well, Casey, let's hit, let's hit the big three here. We let's have get it. leaves, bark, and then we're going to talk cone. That sounds good to me. So in contrast to the giant sequoia, the leaves of the uh, sequoia sempervirens, which is always very confusing, the coast redwood, they are actually needle-like leaves. They come out, they have little points on the end, so they're kind of a little bit pokey. They're two ranked, so they come out left and right on either side of their twig. And they are dark green on top with two lines of stomata on the very bottom. So if you flip them over, there's like two white lines yeah. directly underneath. So those little guys grow out and they, they kind of look, it's kind of, I, 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 I want to say like, they look almost like shaggy, hairy stems. Yeah, they've yeah, got sort of that? a palm frond sort That's, of yeah. attitude. That's a good attitude to have. Uh, yeah. they're, they're not like... They're not like a pine needle. No, exactly. Like they're um, they're kind of bunched right next to each other. So yeah. it's like pop, 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 pop. They're and, dense. Yeah. And then the, when there if there's a twig that comes off on the left and right, those also are like pop, 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 right next to each other. So it looks like um the the tines on a comb, if you like smash them and flatten them out mm-hmm. and then put them all right next to each other and you build like a little cone man with a bunch of uh comb man. Co- comb man comb man with all these little combs that are a little flattened out that's what it looks like so they kind of looked really <laughs> what bunched is, together you're you're you know sometimes you really nail an analogy <laughs> other times and then there's comb man <laughs> comb man i believe is um, how it should be pronounced there's a b right yeah they they're they're really densely packed <laughs> on over. the on the twig um 
They look like they would make a great, you know, if you if you need to stay dry. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you could do worse like than a, than a than a canopy of these things, right? Except that they'll be growing so high into the clouds that they'll actually probably more likely than not be causing the rain that's hitting you mm. than just growing. Uh, or rather than if you were out standing in the fog. Let's 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 imagine that you climb it and cut some off. Ah, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Or there's some there's some that have fallen after a after a storm. Yeah, a bit of a tussle. So as it works out, the other thing about these leaves is that where they grow closer, so you have a twig that's growing. That twig then has a new shoot that comes off on the side. So now you have these two twigs at a Y. Yeah. Where the new needles come at the base of those twigs uh-huh. where they kind of touch, the needles are really short. And then as the twig is growing further out, they get a little bit longer. So they kind of have this sort of like his, like a very smashed histogram kind of idea where they're very tight. Then they go longer, then they go back in towards the tip again. They almost they form like a leaf shape. They kind of do, yeah. That's that, I never actually quite noticed that until yeah. So are, do they grow shorter at the at the base of the stem because they need to have room for the other? I don't. I don't know. I would think so. That I mean that would make sense because you don't want why put so much effort into overlapping yeah. things. You're just shading yourself out. Yeah. I think it's either that or like it's just getting going. So when it puts on its first new needle flush, like the first ones, are like. I'm just starting, but then by the time they get to like that size, the needle twig has already grown so far that now it's just like, sorry. And it puts all of its new energy into the next ones and the next I ones see. and the next ones. But then when it starts slowing down, it starts pulling that energy back. So then they get a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. I see. That's what I think, but I'm not sure. Cool theory. I, I think the other the other idea of them them not wanting to show you, that's like such a micro adjustment yeah you know like a, a tree that big I, I doubt that amount of shade would yeah. make a big difference exactly it's probably it's already just cooking it yeah. doesn't mind but these trees are also shade tolerant so it might be uh, that oh. that may be the you know that could lead us away from that theory they tolerate shade therefore they wouldn't mind if they were shading each other because yes. they still work with it Got so it. It, that leads us away from that theory Got it. So the leaves are these adorable little leaves and they grow. They're obviously evergreen. They're very dark green on top. Every now and then they do have that same bluish tinge that you can get into some conifers. Yeah. But the thing about these is that when they drop, they drop the entire twig at a time. So that entire hmm. little like like twig, that that comb that we're talking about, you don't lose tine, 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 and tine, and tine. You only lose that entire comb all at once. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't know why exactly the Dawn Redwood does the similar thing where there's individual needles, but it drops that entire twig when it goes deciduous. It's not messing around. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it does the whole thing. So it's very curious why it does that. Well, let's talk bark, Case. Let's do it. The woof, bark. Woof, woof. Man, it's just, it's so gorgeous. It's a similar kind of bark pattern as the um, the giant sequoia. The big difference that I see is giant sequoia seem to me to be more rounded off. Like their bark appears more soft. And I mean that both in the strict sense where if you touch it, it looks soft. But also in like the texture on the edges. There's no like sharp points. I see. As opposed to the coast redwood. Its bark is much more angular as it's growing up. Yeah, it's a little more roughly hewn. Yeah, exactly. It's a, that's, that is the definition of, of this bark. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful term. So it, it's very fibrous, but the fibers create these big furrows, and these big furrows kind of crisscross over each other, but they're really elongated and kind of irregularly crissing and crossing. Mm. Similar to the giant sequoia, the bark is like six inches thick, like it gets really thick really fast. Also fire resistant. This tree, even if you do burn it down or burn it, if it gets into the, like through the bark and in, in, into the wood of the tree, the wood will burn, but the rest of the tree will be perfectly fine. Like it grows in a way that is the exact same as every other tree where the cambium layer on the outside is what actually is doing all the work going up and down. We learned cambium means exchange. It's where the, uh, some things are going up, some things are going down, the phloem and the xylem. Mm-hmm. And these trees will just keep on growing right through that. That's but pretty cool. Their bark is, is super, super fire resistant. Do they grow, we talked in, in the uh, giant sequoia episode, how they grow kind of conally, uh-huh. where the bark at the bottom is, is, the most, is the most thickest. 
Yeah. Is big that the taper. same with uh with this guy? It is only in so much as the bark is at the bottom is the oldest bark, so that's been thickening the longest. Yeah. But it doesn't grow as thick quite as fast as the giant sequoia. The okay. sequoia beats it out on that. So it's more columnal. Exactly, yeah. And it is amazing how quickly it will create that columnal shape, hmm. columnar shape, where you just have this column that looks like it's perfectly straight for literally hundreds of feet like wow. sometimes 150 feet or more no bark or i'm sorry no branches just a straight column and if you measured it at the bottom and you measured it at the top you would certainly see there's a difference in diameter maybe of like a few inches or a foot or something but it's separated by 80 feet or more of space and so you can't tell you know the difference like oh is there is it is, is that smaller up there or down there like where where's the increments on that right you just can't tell it's so incremental that you can't really yeah, tell by looking you just can't tell you have to actually measure it to see the difference okay so the bark is really huge the bark is is just this orange color of course we always call it redwood because it's very reddish orange right and the bark or the wood itself is also very red so it really does keep keep its uh, term redwood very well so the bark and the wood are both red yes yeah. well casey let's talk cone the uh cone. i i have something to say about this cone all right i will hear it now i look at it mm -hmm. and i if you put one of these next to a giant sequoia cone i'm not yeah. sure i could tell you the difference oh okay but i'm sure you could tell us the difference i sure can well, they're from different trees. I know <laughs> that much. What other questions do you have? I saw where you were going. So the difference between these cones, Alex, is the coast redwood is maybe an inch or inch and a half long. Aha! Always, and it looks exactly. It will, I'll, I'll take you down a uh, down a uh, continuum here. You have the dawn redwood. The dawn redwood. It's a bunch of lips, as we know from our the, most recent uh, Cone of the Month Club. Yes. Now, that adorable, adorable little cone is very like smooth, and all the features are very well defined for the Dawn Redwood. Yeah. It's very, it's 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 a perfect little cone. Very woody, stays exactly the way it is. You love it. You go and then transform it into a Coast Redwood cone. That cone will look kind of superficially similar, mm -hmm. but it will look like it has aged a thousand years in terms of like getting really wrinkly and like, oh, I can't move my lips. Like I'm not as perfect. Like it's just a little like, it looks like it has been like aged the way that humans age where we kind of get wrinkly and lose the collagen and we kind of, you know, look a little saggy and that kind of thing. It's a bunch of dehydrated lips. Exactly. That's exactly what it looks like is a bunch of dehydrated lips that don't like have that like same youthful attitude. Interesting. But they're the exact same size. Oh, they are. Exact same size. Like All right. damn near. Very, very close. Okay, interesting. Then the giant sequoia, it has that same wrinkliness that you could ever want. But imagine that wrinkliness maintained its like strength and like structural mm. integrity. Okay. And then tripled or quadrupled in size. Right. And got okay. way bigger. That is the giant sequoia, where it has the same like bunch of lips, bunch of wrinkly lips, but a bunch of wrinkly lips that are like, I'm old, but still fit, you know? <laughs> old, but still lit, yeah, like the bristle cone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I love these I love these humongous trees with tiny little cones. They are, and they, they are tiny, and the seeds inside, even tinier. Like, sure. Like, I think they're maybe two or three millimeters wide. Wow. Like, teeny tiny. Casey, we have so much more to say, to say, rather. Or to say about this tree. <laughs> um, but we got to take a break. We always do. The time comes. It's It'll pass. And it is that time. And we'll talk to you real soon. Uh, call us back. We'll be right back after this break with more Completely Arbitrary. Welcome back to Completely Arbitrary. Today we're talking... The Coast Redwood. That's right. Latin. Sequoia Sempervirens. Sequoia Sempervirens. The uh, lighthouse living uncle of the uh, mm. giant sequoia. Yep, yep. Here is, here is like, I'm just going to go down a list of, of things about the Coast Redwood. And 
these each I think we should talk about in turn. This is what our podcast has turned into, yes. a list of things. A list of things, yeah. That we're, we're essentially the BuzzFeed of podcasts. Wow. Number 10. Number 10. Yeah, well, that's also like a little bit of a, a Discovery Channel thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Number 10 most dangerous trees. Right. Most most gnarly shark bites. <laughs> most gnarly shark bites. <laughs> that would be a great Patreon. And we'll just like everyone will be like, what do you guys actually just went through gnarly shark bites you found on the internet? Gnarlysharkbites.com. Yeah, that's right. G S B. <laughs> anyway, back to trees. Whatever. So the Coast Redwood is a tree that everyone, like everyone in the world, is thinks is great. Like people come from all over the world to see these trees. Yeah. Sometimes they think they're gonna go see the sequoias and they mess up and they go to San Francisco and they just stay on the coast and then they're like, what? 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 Where's this one? The the, the famous ones, like you said, you can drive through, which is ah, uh, it's just such a thing. Everyone thinks there's the uh tree that you can drive through. Like, let's go go. Did you go to the drive through tree? There's like. A whole 30. bunch. Yeah. Wow. Anyone who had private land with a big tree, they like made that happen. They just dug a dug a big tunnel into a tree. Was that a was that a product of car culture in oh, the fifties? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly that. Where everyone that's as soon as people started coming over to California to live their you know fancy lives after the war, and yeah. they had their new fangled car. Yeah, yeah, and which is it worked back then because cars were way smaller, so that you could just like drive a little teeny tiny Model T through this you know medium sized tree. But then they kept it going, and people were like, "What? What are you saying? I can't drive my Hummer through this tree." And it's like, "You're because it's a small tank, and our tree is only a certain <laughs> diameter." It's very sad, but it's just I. This I think of all things is tree mutilation, because there's the trees are still living, That's, right? So do, and they just carve a hole into it. Do they compartmentalize around these things? Yeah, I mean, they try their best. That's a big. That's a big hole. It's a to big fill. hole. You do. Yeah. Damn. But that's what's great about these trees is they still live. Like that tree is still probably a healthy tree or any of those trees. I one fell over like a couple of years ago, which makes sense. It's very structurally compromised. Oh my God. Yeah. So you that, cut a hole in it. Man, that is such a that is such a tacky fucking. Oh yeah. Embarrassing display. It used to be everyone wanted to do it. Like How that was the thing. How fucking lame. Well, it, it does though, Alex, exemplify something that's amazing about these trees yeah. is that they are survivors. Yeah. They only need the tiniest amount of uh, connection between their roots and the upper canopy and they will live. Not only will they live, they will still thrive and grow taller as long as they don't physically fall over. Yeah. They will continue to just bang it out like they were doing it every single day. This is surprising to me because you would think a tree that needs and loves so much water Uh would need a lot of cambium to move that shit up and down. Yeah. But like you said, it, uh, what, what is that reverse breathing thing they Uh, do where they suck in water through the leaves? Oh yeah, exactly. I Um, I like the idea of reverse breathing. That's cool. So they have that. Yeah. That's half the reason they're such good survivors in this area specifically, but also elsewhere because they can still suck in water in good conditions from their stomata way up in the canopy. And is that like an adaptive behavior oh yeah for okay. sure yeah not a, most trees can't do that or don't do that sure and they just need to get water from their roots some can so it's, it's definitely not a, a you know 100 percent one way or the other some do it to a certain degree redwoods are adept at it cool very good and of course like we said before they're the tallest growing tree right now in the entire world used to be way bigger in terms of volume than even the giant sequoia Wow. There's a legend has it 55,000 uh, cubic feet of space, which, if you recall, is I think a thousand cubic feet bigger than the biggest giant sequoia that we have right now, giant, uh, uh, General Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> what did Casey try to say? <laughs> so that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's wild. Yeah. I mean, I've said it several times in this episode and the previous episode. It's, it's uh, sort of uncomprehendable. Unfathomable. Uh, incomprehensible? Incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. Yes. Not comprehensible. Correct. It is comprehensible. Nah. <laughs> no. Nah. You sounded like <laughs> Matt Berry right there. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, you do. All right. He's a funny guy. So in uh, the thing about these trees that I think is like the most spectacular of all is nobody before the 1980s mm-hmm. really gave 
too much of a shit about what's going on up, up in the canopy of a tree. Hmm. They were just like, oh, it was a tree. It was, it was, it was some uh, bird's nest, uh, some lichen, moss. Whatever. Sure. Get out of here. We can't well, see up care. there. Why care? Yeah, why care? So um, a couple enterprising people, um, one guy's name is Steve Sillett. He's a researcher at the Humboldt State University hmm. in Northern California. And Steve was like, you know what? I'm curious. And there was there were others. I... I, I uh, Fail to remember their names off the top of my head, but he's the, by far the most famous of them. But there were multiple different people who have started pioneering, climbing into the, the canopy. Um, one person, um, Nalini Nedkarni, is another researcher who also said, we should climb trees and see what's going on up there. Wow. And it was just like, a stunning, stunning revelation. So we're saying, hey, don't cut down these trees. They're habitat. They create habitat because they create a forest and they create the conditions in which a forest can thrive. A forest meaning all the other plants and trees and animals and things that live on the ground and live inside this ecosystem, right? Yeah. So we said, don't cut these trees down because they as a collection are good. So then Steve and all these other folks basically are like, hold on. Well, what's up there? Like, these are the tallest growing things. They are some of the oldest growing er, things. They've been around for thousands of years. They are so massive that the one, the biggest one right now, I think it's called Hyperion. And it's like, I think the most complex canopy ever like mapped in the world Wow! because it like goes up and has this big gigantic arm that comes off and like they're just it's like the the architecture of it is beyond comprehensive Mm. again so they kind of said well these things are so huge could they be an ecosystem unto themselves oh my god (laughs) the suspense so these people started climbing these trees Alex they went all the way up and they it's like oh well they actually have to take um uh, crossbows with little wires on them, no. shoot them up over the tree or into the tree somehow. Mm. That comes down. Then they pull up a str- or pull that string 300 feet up and 300 feet back down with a rope attached to it. Attach that rope to their harnesses and they, and they sidle on up. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. A crossbow. A freaking crossbow. That's pretty, that's pretty, it's like a grappling hook, yeah. essentially. Essentially, yeah. Oh, no, sort of. There's nothing else that shoots that far up. Like, that's... they have to shoot 300 feet straight straight up amazing or at least a couple hundred feet and then that's like some of them the first branch isn't for a hundred feet or so Ooh, and then they climb them god and that then, makes my skin crawl oh, oh imagine how the tree feels probably but, nothing casey would you what are you talking about there's literally a thing crawling on its skin would you uh it's not skin casey would <laughs> you would you climb a tree like that absolutely i've been 175 feet i think that's my oh, highest or 100, boy. About probably close to 150 you're you know what you are? You're a mad lad. Yes, right I am. That's yeah, insane, right. Case. It's it's so cool though. Like to get up to Ooh. the top of a tree like that and see what it's like. Like assume you let's just say you can do it safe, right? So there's ways that they can do it and get people who are not like climby people up where they essentially one person who is a climby person goes up, sets the rope on a pulley. That pulley then brings back down, or they set the rope all the way through, go back to the bottom. Let's say they're like, hey, how much do you weigh? You're like, I weigh 150 pounds. <laughs> then you put 150 pounds on the other side of this rope. Now you have these two lines, and you pull that 150 feet or 150 pounds up to the top of the tree. You then set a line that goes from 150 pound weight top of the tree all the way down to you, 150 pounds on the bottom of the tree. Then they just pull on one side and it's like a dumb waiter where you just pull on one side and then the whole thing comes up. It's like waiting for a, um, a backdrop or something uh, if you're doing theater. I mean, I, I personally would never in a million years. I have, I have a, I, over the past few years, I've developed a random phobia of heights. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, I guess it happens. I would never, I would never do this. Um, even looking at pictures of pe- of these little, Ugh. these little, uh, what look like squirrels on a normal sized tree. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's exactly the right idea. Uh, it's pretty terrifying. It's t- it, it is. And we'll, you can look up photos of this because National Geographic has followed Steve Sillett. There's a bunch of people who are all about it. The Redwoods, because they're in like a very populated and a very wealthy area. Yeah. There's a lot of like save the Redwoods and like these leagues and, you know, groups and that kind of thing. Which is wonderful. I just wish we had that for literally every species of tree out there, except for maybe like 
the apple. We don't need to save those. <laughs> the tree I mean, of heaven. Yeah, or you know, get rid of the get rid of the thunder thundercloud plum. I don't need a the American Society of Thundercloud plums. Okay, let don't worry about it. Shift your focus. I uh, I, I mean, redwoods have that star power. They do. They've got they that name recognition. That. Yeah. So, um, the they would do that. So you can climb up there. But Alex, when you're at the top of this tree, the the thing looks completely different like it looks the same because obviously you're in a tree like you can see it but don't you're not imagining that there's like this little perfect point where you're on like this little whip of a stem and you're like oh it's kind of moving around it is up there at such a high elevation that it's been battered by everything for so long yeah. that you have these thick branches where the one that I was in, which again was half this height, is the branches kind of grew up and then just kind of grew out and flattened out really nicely. So you could just sit up there. You couldn't move the branches. They were unbendable. They were so densely wooded because they grow a teeny tiny bit over you know a single year. So you have 50 years worth of growth and the thing is maybe an inch wide, but you can't bend it because it's just so so dense and thick and hard wow so you're sitting up there at the top of this tree and you're looking around and you're like wow i'm a at the top of a forest like just living in it you can just look out and see the tops of all the trees and all the other things that are going on around you and on top of that you have this tree that has been living up there with this branch right here growing bigger and bigger for say 500 years so it is maybe now three feet in diameter Mm -hmm. It has been sitting there with needles dropping on it for hundreds and hundreds of years. There's other branches. There's other uh, um, unions where you have this little like branch popping out, so it creates this little cup. Then you have a branch that fell 100 years ago, and now is kind of squished between this. You have this complexity that develops in this canopy. You get all these little detri- de- uh, decaying pieces of detritus, and then you get a bird that lands over there, and that bird is just ate a bunch of huckleberries. It poops out some huckleberries. Then you get uh, some squirrels. You're like, what the heck is going on up here? And they climb up because that's what they do. Flying squirrels specifically live in this area this they don't even touch the ground Hmm. red trevals same thing so you end up finding that these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years worth of soil developing from fungus decaying different bits of plants that have landed on there then you get these seeds that come in from the birds all of a sudden alex you have huckleberries and thimbleberries and bunch berries and Mm. all these other little herbs that are deposited by certain animals that start growing up on this moss covered thing where there's literally feet of soil because it's just been decaying needles for hundreds and hundreds of years sometimes thousands of years i have spent the last two minutes staving off a panic attack because i started thinking about being in this tree oh gosh and i feel it in my chest (laughs) i'm sorry alex all right, so imagine you're But I did floating. hear what you said. Yeah, you're not climbing, you're floating. Like you're in a little airplane, like a little drone has picked you up. All right. And it's taking you over there. That's fine. Yeah, okay. So Wow, okay, so there's a whole there's a whole garden, there's a whole scene up there, man. There is a whole scene and it's very urban. It's very cool. <laughs> is there like a cafe at the top? Oh, of course there is. Yeah, and they sell microbrews. Can obviously. I have a Can I order a panini? Um probably. Yes. So you you could are there actual like berry bushes growing on this tree? Yes. That's fucking wild. There are berry bushes. There are like everything you could imagine in terms of epiphytes, which are these plants that grow on the side of another plant. Yeah. So mosses and uh, lichen and uh, licorice fern, those kinds of things, okay. like ferns and these little bits that grow on things. But then there's also whatever you would see on the forest floor also up here as well. So oh. huckleberries and um, redwood sorrel, which looks like um, a little ki- kind of uh, uh, clover kind of thing. Bunch berries and ferns and everything you could ever imagine that could grow on the ground would be growing up on these stems any f- in these crotches in these branches any fungus going on oh yeah all over the place because that's what they, they that's how they live and that's how all these things are uh, decomposed is by fungus and little creatures right so you have fungus that's growing up there probably not as much fungus as what you'd expect somewhere else um, because there's only a certain amount of space 
Oh, okay. But they live. Because, I mean, it's not, it, it is huge, but imagine like a branch the size of your bed over here. Yeah. And this is, what, a full size or queen? Uh, that's a queen. Yeah. So a queen size bed. There's branches that are that big in these trees. As wide as that? As wide as that. And so that would be... You lay on top of it. Yeah, you could lay on top of it. Everything else is laying on top of it. Decomposed over millions or not millions, thousands if possible years, but many times hundreds of years. And then you get that soil build up. Fungus starts doing its job. They start blooming up over here, popping up little mushrooms. That moves to another tree. And these are decay fungus that decay detritus not the not the tree themselves because the tree's still alive it's fighting off any times that comes in any, any fungus that tries to get in its bark mm-hmm. it's like stay out the bark's like okay cool the fungus doesn't worry about it it's not worth its time it's got plenty to eat it's not going to go kill that tree yeah. the defenses of the tree are too good secondly you get animals that come along with that there are entire species of salamanders that live only in the canopy. Salamanders? Yeah. What they, are they doing all the way up there? You know what? They just jump. They, I assume they walk. <laughs> like they just wow. walk straight up the side of it. Maybe they get dropped off by a, by a bird or something. But they have also, you get those salamanders because there are so many little arthropods and bugs and beetles and things and worms. Anything that lives on the bottom will live up top, and they will live up top and never come down. They will go through entire life cycles of reproduction, death, and rebirth only up there in the canopy of these trees. Wild. Isn't that insane? You know what I was just thinking? This thing would make a fantastic nurse log. Yes, it is. That's Yeah, it is essentially a living nurse log. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Casey, I think this is a great time. To get into our review of the Coast Redwood. Okay. How exciting. Oh, Alex. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, here's how it works. We're going to give some final thoughts on this tree, what we feel, what we think. Then we'll give it a cone rating, 0 to 10, golden cones of honor. <sighs> Casey, as our resident expert, as he takes a, a quick drink of water to wet his palate for this dissertation, we begin with you. I just want to first off say thank you, everyone, for having me. Completely arbitrary. All of you listeners out there, this has been such a spectacular honor you have to thank the council yes and the council as well as the academy and uh all my all my salamander homies <laughs> my wandering friends my wandering friends never stop wandering to get to the point the coast redwood is many times the answer that i provide when someone says casey what is your favorite tree? Wow. I have, once we started this podcast, I refused to answer that question because I would, A, be like, well, I don't know. I now professionally rate and review trees. Therefore, if I say one that is my favorite, that is me giving away my profession for free. Yeah, if you do something good, don't do it for free. Oh my you know I mean? God. <laughs> no, I just, uh, honestly, I, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, thought I couldn't help myself. I love that. It's mostly that, uh, I didn't want to give it away. So, I'm giving it away now. Wow. This is my favorite tree. Casey. I have reasons as to why. And I will go through them one by one. The first, uh, this tree is an ecosystem unto itself. We had just talked about uh, the fact that it, it, it supports everything as a living nurse log, right? It supports laurels and rhododendrons and little flowering plants of all kinds. Not to mention, there has been a literal 40-foot-tall hemlock, a tree in and of its own self, growing in the canopy of a redwood. That is extremely cool. I've also seen that in the Western Red Cedar, so credit due, credit due. Of course. Um, But there's also ecosystems that live up there, salamanders that live and breed in these trees, and it turns out they do climb. They just climb up the side of it. (laughs) Do that again. Just go up the little, uh, little, uh, like Alex Honnell up there, free soloing. So they climb up there. They follow the worms that also, for whatever reason, climb up there. And then they eat that. They live. They breed. You get little voles that live up there that support owls that only eat these things. Wow. If you want to read a great little story about this, uh, the overstory talks about this. And it's really, it's, it's the most tragic part of the book for sure. Wow. But it is, the trees themselves are entire ecosystems. So don't cut them down because they're destroying the ecosystem that's below it. Don't cut it down because you're destroying a whole microcosm that's up there. Next thing, it is outlived everything that could hurt it. 
everything. There's no fungus that attacks it. Mm. it. It doesn't have a single fungus that I know of that will cause it to die or to decay the middle out. It's beaten them. No insects get it. There's no insects that will climb into a tree and kill it. They have beat them. Fires don't affect them. If a fire comes in, which happened this last summer, and it burns through Coast Redwoods, they just sprout entirely brand new. Yeah. For like a little furry stem of a plant. And then they're just like, gonna keep going. Then they keep going. Yeah. They don't care. They will, if you cut them down, if the fire does get into the middle, if there's even the slightest amount of space, I've seen them be 100% hollow, like two pieces of bark going up 30 feet, then connecting, and then a brand new perfect stem grow up from there as if it was, nothing happened. Mm. They are unstoppable trees you cut them down and from the base of the stump the entire the everywhere around that stump new sprouts will shoot up and they will create new gigantic trees they call those fairy rings oh yeah we have like a 30 foot stump that then has a perfect circle of now you know 24 inch stems growing out of it you're like why are these trees in a literal perfect circle it's because well they, they sprouted from a perfect circle fascinating all the genes of those trees are exactly the same they are clones so like uh, in Lord of the Rings, where the elves meet in the forest? Yes. That could have been like a, one of those. Very likely. That's perfect. That's a great example. So on top of that, um, y- that's if you cut them down. They grow. They're the biggest. They're the tallest. Yeah. They, are, they can take water from the sky and the air. What have they not solved? Look at you. They're a 10 out of 10, Alex. Wow! They're the perfect tree. I, I, I can't say that. The only time I've said another 10 has been the bristlecone pine. Yeah. Because it's solved all the problems, but done it in a way that's like, I'm just going to stay here and never stop. The Coast Redwood did the opposite, where they're like, throw it at me. I'm living in the most fertile, beautiful, fungus-ridden space in the entire planet, other that isn't you know a tropical forest. And it's crushing it. Yeah. It just punches away anything that comes near it, including humans. We don't replant coastal redwood forests. We cut them down and they just regrow. Yeah. They just sprout from the old trees. They're the they're the perfect tree. There's just no question. There's no there's no tree that uh, is as good. Amazing. I don't know how to say it. Ten out of ten golden cones of honor. It's ten out of ten little little funky uh, little little lippy golden cones of honor. <laughs> how exciting! Wow, Casey. This is why I couldn't, that's the real reason why I didn't want to tell anyone when they asked me. And they're like, what is your favorite tree? I'm like, well, I, we got a whole episode planned about it. Wow. I Sorry, okay, that's, all I, that's just all I have to say. A perfect <clears throat> 10. Not to mention, they're stunningly beautiful. Yeah. Stunningly beautiful. They're forests unlike anything else. I, I, I got to get me down there. We got to, yeah, we, I'm going to send you up into a tree is what we're going to do. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Alex, I'm sorry. That was very exciting. But the people need to know what your review is. Yeah, sure. Of the Coast Redwood Sequoia Sempervirens. Yeah. The Evergreen Sequoia. Okay. I think it's okay. I'm just. This is fine. I'm, Everything's fine. I'm kidding. Uh, clearly a powerhouse. Clearly a marvel of nature. Uh, king of the forests. Why not? A true. A true. Uh, a true legend of mm. a tree mm-hmm. uh ewok approved yeah yeah um yeah what's i mean what do you say uh i i, I ran into a similar issue in our giant sequoia episode like what are you gonna say about it it's like mm. yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna have any new revelatory opinions on this tree that somebody else hasn't gone over a million times i disagree i find that many of your opinions are quite novel well i appreciate that casey i i, I think you said it best it's it's uh it's legendary. It's it has whole ecosystems living in it, which is just mind boggling. Um, I now want to see like a red wall type uh, sitcom. Red wall, okay. Red wall meets uh, like in a sitcom fashion. You know, Red Wall. No, Red Wall is a book series by uh, uh, Brian Jacques or Jacques Brian. Okay, I can't remember his name. Um, children's books uh medieval uh it's, it's set in like a medieval time but every everybody's a, a woodland creature oh all the characters are woodland creatures i see okay the abbeys are are run by mouses and mm. or mice as you might call them yeah i'd say mouses so imagine mouses. like 
Imagine a cast of characters living in a redwood tree. Ah, yes. Okay, I see. It'd be very adorable. Somebody make that happen. There's yeah. uh, there's talented artists listening right now. Please Ugh. make my dreams come true. Yes. Oh, it's our dream now. Uh, man, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it an eight, or sorry, yes. Talk an, your way through. An 8.99 Golden Cones of Honor. 0.99? Yeah. Oh, wow. For my own opinion. Stunning. However... I think it deserves to be in the Golden Arboretum of Honor. Oh, So because okay. it is my good friend Casey Clapp's favorite tree, <laughs> that earns it .01 cones. Oh, my god. Bringing my score to a nice round 9.0. 9.0. Golden Cones of Honor. Wow, I want to know. Oh, Alex, you are. this is so exciting. This is two trees in a row that we get to hear the melodica sing us a melody to the coastal redwood mm. to the coast redwood we honor you congratulations and thank you Congratulations, Coast Redwood. You are an official inductee into the Golden Arboretum of Honor. You deserve it. I'm crying a little bit. Casey's tearing up. I wanted this for so long. That was our review of the Coast Redwood. Casey, it's time for a segment. I'm so excited. And uh, I'm I'm handing this one over to you, Casey. Oh, thank you, Alex. Happy to be here. So... As, as we discussed last week, and you all discuss again, it's your birthday today. It is my birthday today, yes. Happy birthday. As sorry of for the everyone. Reco- as of the recording of this episode, January 20th, it's yeah, my Yeah, exactly. Birthday. So sorry for you hearing it again. However, you get a double dip because this game is Jeopardy Part 2. Wow, Casey! I decided to write a Jeopardy. It's not about you specifically, but I didn't want you to have to, you know, spend this whole time coming up with a game. Think to me, I was like, "This is your day. You get to play a game." <laughs> you know, so a, a week ago, I, I I told Casey, "Gosh, you know what? That Jeopardy was so fun. We should do that again." <laughs> I can't remember what what episode we did the original one in, but Casey, here we go. This is a great birthday present. Thank you. Alex, thank you. Happy birthday. We could not have done this podcast without you. Wow. You are absolutely an integral part of something that we're all happy here. So, everyone, when you hear this, for the second week in a row, go shout out Alex Croson. <laughs> wow. Here we go. All right. What are the categories? Category number one, architecture. Hmm. Architecture. Architecture. Okay. Category number two, books. Next one, Fungal and Associates. Fungal and Associates, the yes. law firm? Yes, exactly. Okay. LLC. Law uh, <laughs> Law. Thank you. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Bob Law's Law Blog. The Law Law Corporation. Yes. The next one is The Bee's Trees. Wow. The next one, the final one is Heroes. Okay. Alex, Heroes. The David Bowie song. Uh, exactly. Very similar to that. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown. Architecture, those are tree terms. Uh, generally, uh, tree terms. You know, oh, okay. sometimes the architecture of trees. Great. Books, those are books that we have somehow covered or talked about in this podcast. Okay. The next one, fungal and associates. That's about fungals and associates. Okay. Fungus and associates. The next one, the bees, trees. Mm-hmm. Those are trees that we've covered that start with the letter B. Fun. The final one, heroes. Alex, name that hero. Okay, like Greek hero? All sorts of heroes. Okay. Popular culture heroes. Oh, I'm interested to see who you think is a hero. I'm interested to see if you can guess who I think are heroes. Here's how the game plays. We have 100, 200, 300, 400 level questions. We have five categories. Alex, as our winner from last week, which yes. I believe you had approximately $1 million. Wow, okay. The best, the most in all time. Doctor. You get to choose the first category. I will reiterate, you get points for things you get right. I won't take away points if you get them wrong. Oh, great. I don't think that's how it works. I love that adjustment. Is that how, is that, uh, no, that, that is that? not how it works. You bet whatever, whatever the, you're betting whatever money that question is worth oh, when you play Jeopardy. Oh, gosh. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, so okay. Y- yeah, you're betting, you're betting whatever is here. I have one request. Yes. 
when I ask mm-hmm. the thing, yep. will you say answer Yes. before giving me the clue? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I'll take, uh, what is it, two, three, four, and five? Uh, 100? Uh, no, one, two, three, and four okay. hundred. I'll take architecture for 200. Architecture for 200. Answer. This is the carrot of root growth that disappears as trees age. What is the tap root? That's correct. Tap All right. root is correct. Alex, that's 200 points. Well hey. Done. Okay. Whoops. I'm going to make here. I'm going to make rent tonight. <laughs> you bet you are. All right, Alex. The floor is yours. The bees trees for 100, please. The bees trees Casey. for 100. Answer. This tree is a homonym for another thing in Oregon that's very often gray. The sky is very often gray in Oregon. Yes. Now, where is that sky most often gray? That's a homonym with a tree. See, I'm forgetting what homonym means. Oh, a homonym is a word that is exactly the same uh, or sounds the same, but has different meanings. Oh, sure. Depending on the context. Okay. A hom. I have no idea. Uh beach tree the beach tree sorry that was a hard one i see okay and that was only 100 god dang all right you're down to 100 points now alex the producers aren't fucking around no they isn't all right next to you uh i'll take uh architecture for 100 architecture for 100 answer this is when two parts of a tree are put together to grow together what is grafting? That is correct. Well done, Alex. That puts you in the lead. All right. We'll be right back after these breaks. <laughs> Colgate for when you're... Um, <laughs> I'll take books for 300, please, Casey. Books, 300. All right, Alex, here we go. The answer is, this book was inspiration for several other related topics, ex- especially the sweet ones. Another hint would be we used it at the beginning of the podcast very often. What is the Sibley Guide? No. Oh, too bad. That is braiding sweetgrass. Oh, Specifically in reference to the sugar maple episode where we used it and many other things. A lifetime ago, Casey. A lifetime ago. Alex, you're at negative 100 points. All right, it happens. All right, here I'll we go. back. What do you got next? Uh, what's that last, the, the middle? Oh, fun, I'll take fungal and associates for 200. Please. Fungal and associates for 200. Alex, answer. This fungus type forms symbiosis with tree roots. What is a mycorrhizal fungi? That's the one. You're at 100 now. You're dancing around zero, and that's hey, what we like to see. That's right, my Alex. style, baby. <laughs> what do we got next? What's that last category again? Uh, heroes. I'll take uh, heroes for 200. Ah, heroes for 200. Answer. This hero beheaded the only mortal Gorgon. <laughs> who is Theseus? No, if you or, can buzz back in. Uh, who is uh, Heracles? You are close, but still wrong. Who if you is... can buzz back in. Uh, uh, Achilles. Mm, not uh, quite there. Who is... Uh, sorry, Alex. Bad news. That was Perseus. I'm so ashamed. Yeah, Perseus did Perseus that. was what I thought I was saying when I was saying Theseus. Oh, all right. Well, we'll give you the points then. <laughs> no, no. Points. Okay. I got it wrong. <laughs> you're, at, uh, you're at negative 100. So they are Greek heroes. Yeah, uh, right. Hey, I'll take, I'll take heroes for 100. Heroes for 100. Let's see how Greek this answer is. Answer, this isn't the hero we deserve, but it's the one we need. Okay, who is Batman? That is the Batman. Speaking you're at bats. zero points. Alex, well done. That was a swift answer. Uh, heroes is fun. I'll take heroes for 300. <laughs> heroes for 300. Answer. This hero walked for a long time carrying a heavy burden much of the way. God. Who is Jesus Christ? No, not Jesus Christ. <laughs> This hero walked for a long time carrying a very heavy burden most of the way. Who's Forrest Gump? No, you're close. What burden was It's he- not Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, this is not Jesus Christ. It's more like folk uh, or uh, uh, pop culture oh. heroes. Oh. <laughs> walked a very long way carrying a heavy burden. I don't know why you also think that's Jesus Christ. He, he walked to his own crucifixion carrying his own his oh, own cross. Oh, yeah, that wasn't a very long way. I'm talking about like Middle Earth long. Oh, is it Frodo? Is it Frodo? <laughs> Was Frodo the one that carried the heavy burden? 
Oh my God. Who is Sam? Samwise Ganji is the right answer. Well done, because we all know who actually carried Frodo, who carried the ring. Okay, hold Sam. on. I have something to say about this. Everybody is all, all I, I understand Sam's contribution. Frodo took it 99% of the way. Yeah, but he wouldn't have been able to go even 50% of that if Sam hadn't literally carried him half the way. He wouldn't have even gone up the mountain, Alex. He only carried in the last bit. Hey. That counted for the most. It was the oh, it's like proportionally fifty percent of the journey. I think so. Frodo got himself almost eaten by a by a, yeah, a giant spider. It's true. Yeah, come on, Shalab. Anyway, I'll take architecture for four hundred. Uh-huh. Casey, architecture for four hundred. Alex, answer. This is the red veil over the seed of a nutmeg. Ooh, what is mace? That is correct. We'll take that answer. Also, it is the aural. Yes, that, I, I knew that too. Oh, good. Okay. Perfect. You can also find aurals on uh, what pomegranate seeds. Yes, that is exactly right. Well done. <clears throat> you are clawing your way to the top. Uh, I'll round it out. Architecture for 300. Architecture for 300. Answer. This series of tubes takes water and nutrients up. What is cambium? Uh, oh, excuse me. What is phloem? What is xylem? Xylem is the correct answer. Oh, Alex just saw me staring at him blankly. <laughs> I think we would have accepted cambium. Sure. That was, a, that was an acceptable answer. Because the xylem and the phloem make up the cambium. Exactly. But they, one goes down, one goes up. Exactly. Phloem goes down because it flows down. Well, That's sure. That's the way to remember. Okay. I see that. All right, Alex. What do we got next? Xylem goes up because it's fun to play a xylophone like... Hey, that's a really good, that's a perfect way to remember that. Less fun than... I'm going to start playing uh, or telling it to people when I teach them how to identify these things. There you go. Great job. The Bees Trees for 200, Case. The Bees Trees for 200. Let's hope that this is a better clue than the last one. Answer, what's this? What's that smell? Never mind. Let's plant it everywhere, said apparently everyone. What is the Bradford Pear? The Bradford Pear is correct. Alex, That's uh, you're now past $1,000. All right. The board is yours. You're at $1,100. All right. I'll take Fungal and Associates for 100 Here Casey. we go. Answer. I'm just dancing around this daily double, huh? You sure are. This fungus creates a burnt zone around its host oak. Hmm. What is the black truffle? That is correct, Alex. Right. Well done. You, see, I could see the ruffled brow as you're like, hmm. I think it's this. It has sort of an allelopathic it uh, does thing going on. Uh, bees trees for three hundred. Bees trees for three hundred. This is a daily double double, Alex. Whoa, a daily quadruple. This is almost unheard of. That's amazing. Probably will never happen again. Here's the question. Here's the answer. Rather, okay. it's just a, this is more just now. Now we're just getting to trivia. Name all four trees that have black in their common name. How much do you want to wager? Hmm. How much do I have currently? You have twelve hundred dollars. I'll wager. Uh, I think you're supposed to wager before you get the the clue. But oh. I'll wager like six hundred. Six hundred. It is. All right. Your wager is six hundred. All right, Alex. You okay. have 30 seconds on the clock. <clears throat> Can you name all four trees that we've covered on this show yeah. that have black in the common name? Begin. They're nigras, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, the black willow. Yep. Black walnut. Yep. Black spruce. Yep. Japanese black pine. That's it. Yeah. Alex, well done. All right, so you bet 600. Does that mean you get 600? Yes. Okay, cur- perfect. You're at 1,800, Alex. Whew. Well done. All right, here we go. Next I, up, I, we, I'm I'm proud of myself for that one. That, that was, was a good. that was a good that was a that was a really hard one. Honestly, it's you good. would have got points for the three that you got though. Oh, good. Okay, what do you got? Uh, let's take um, Fungal and Associates for three hundred. Fungal and Associates for three hundred. They said it couldn't happen twice. Oh my god! Ba-dee, 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 ba-dee. There's a second daily double. Alex, congratulations. This one is a little bit more challenging, but I think you can do it. Okay. How much do you want to wager? I'll wager. Uh, you know what? Uh, how much? How much do I have now? Eighteen hundred. I'll wager another six hundred. Another six hundred, Alex. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Six hundred on the table. Name four, at least four of the five fungi on the coveted, completely arbitrary sticker sheet. <laughs> All right, King Bully. King Bully. Fly Agarica. Fly Agarica or Agaricus. Okay. We'll take both. Chantrell. Chantrell. There's three. Morel. Morel, there's four. Alex, congratulations. Thank you. We'll give you an extra 200 points if you can name the last one. 
Ooh, uh, honey. That's it? Oh, my God. That puts you at uh, $2,600. And if you want one of those sticker sheets, go to arbitrarypod.com slash merch. That's A-R-B-O-R-T-R-A-R-Y-Pod.com slash merch today. Welcome back, everyone. What an exciting round we just had. We have only f- six more to go. All right. Alex, what do you have? Books. Books. For 100, please. For 100. Here we go. All right. Answer. This book brought Greek life front and center. What is Mythos? That's right. By Mythos. Stephen Fry. You are now at 2,700 unassisted points. Uh, books for four. Books for 400. Here we go. You ready? Yes. Shabow! Answer. This book details the forest among the fungus. F- details the forest among the fungus. Mm. Oh. Um, if you can get us to the answer, that works. It's, uh, oh, I know it. I swear I know it, but yes, I don't do. know it. I'm not going to get there. It's by Suzanne Samard. Oh, the mother tree. Finding the mother tree. That's right. 400 <laughs> unassisted points. Alex, you're at 2,900. All right. Well done. What do you got next? Three more. Uh, I'll take uh, birds uh, birds and the bees uh, the, for 400. The bees trees for 400. Answer. Quote, when I was your age, unquote, is how this tree begins literally talking to everything. What is the bristlecone pine? Oh my god. 30 300. Well the, done. The oldest tree. The oldest tree. Over 5000 5000 years. Incredible. Old. Yeah. That yep. was around during the the first kingdom of the Egyptian uh mm-hmm. empire. Yeah, which is wild. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Well done, Alex. You crushed the the bees trees except for the beech tree. Thank you. Yeah. All right, two more. Uh a fungal and associates for four. Fungal and associates for four hundred. Answer. These fungal associates are a network of tree minded beings from around the world. <laughs> <laughs> what are the listeners of Completely Arbitrary? That's right. Everyone, you're the best in the world. That's why you're worth 400 points. <laughs> All <Thanks>. right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're the single best. You got me 400 points. Alex. I'm paying that rent. You better be. <laughs> uh, heroes for four. Almost $4,000 today. <laughs> All right. Heroes for 400. Alex, yeah. are you ready? I'm ready. His brow is sweating. My, my mother's spaghetti on my sweater already. <laughs> Answer, this hero can jump great heights, swim like a fish, and became an important senator. Jump great heights. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Who is Jar Jar Banks? You got it, Alex. <laughs> what a spectacular, spectacular end. Oh, wow, The Casey. greatest hero of our time. Jar Jar Binks. Very good. How did I? How did I do? What Alex, was my total? Spectacular. You got four thousand one hundred dollars. Wow. That is outstanding. I think we're gonna. Ch- yeah, it's the best anyone's ever done on completely arbitrary. I came back. Jeopardy. You sure did. You had a rough start, but that's okay. Is there a final Jeopardy? There is no final Jeopardy. Uh, we actually ran out of time. We have to cut straight to the next show, which is <laughs> uh, Wheel of Fortune. All right. So sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm down for that too. Uh Casey, very well done. That was a lot of fun. Happy birthday, Alex. I hope you had a good time. <laughs> Thank you. I had a great time. Casey, it's time for our completely arbitrary QA. Alrighty. This week's question is from Guinevere. Guinevere, hi, how are you? Hello, Guinevere. Guinevere asks. Guinevere says, rather, after listening to your opinions on Bonsai, mm. I wonder what each of you thinks of the living tree sculptures and furniture of Peter Cook. Oh, yeah. Are you familiar, Casey? I am. Uh, if you search for Pook Tray Art, P-O-O-K-T-R-E Art, uh, you will see lots of images of his work online, including a living chair. Does this type of sculpting shorten a tree's lifespan? Or would it be like the living root bridges in India and get stronger with time? What kind of trees would be best for growing my own living lawn furniture? If you could grow one piece of furniture for yourselves, what kind would each of you choose? Thank you for continuing to make such a fun podcast. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Guinevere, Guinevere, thank you. Uh, Great questions. Well done. Casey, if you Google, we'll put some of these uh, photos Mm. on the Instagram post for this Mm -hmm. show. Uh, if you Google these, 
these sculptures. <laughs> it's not like he carved something out of a tree. Yeah, right. It's not like a sculpture in that sense. It is him taking a tree and manipulating the branches and how they grow to form shapes. Yeah. Uh, most notably, a chair that he sits in made of branches. It's really fun. Like it, it, I, I, it looks, it looks like one of those hangy things that you have, like, uh, yes. like on a, a porch or something. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like a hanging kind of enclosed cocoon chair. Yeah, one of those egg basket chairs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, he also has these people. That are like they mm-hmm. have like a head and arms and legs, and I was thinking as I was looking at it, if you were lost in the woods at Ooh. night and you came across it's these like a mist, yeah, hey, Mister Mister, and you and you get close and you and and you say, "Have you seen?" And then you you notice this is like a Twilight Zone episode, yeah, exactly. that he's made of wood, and you're like, "I hate this place." Uh, terrifying, yeah, I yeah, don't know. it's a little Casey, bit scary. What do you think? Does this hurt the tree? You know, it really doesn't hurt the tree that much. Uh, it the tree is is going to be trying to grow straight up, like that's what they do is just grow straight up and straight out as best they can. Phototropic, exactly. So it's manipulating the tree, but you're not hurting it. You're just making the tree be like, oh, God, "I was already up there, now I have to grow over here." Yeah. So it's the same as bonsai. Bonsai actually does this a lot. In fact, in a lot of different gardens people do this to like get a branch to grow in a certain space because once the branch is there and lignified and like like solid it will stay there it's the new growth that will try to grow off in some weird direction towards the sun yeah so in this case all they're doing uh this entire artwork is just bending the branches as they're growing so it's not even like hurting the tree in that you're like breaking it then it has to repair itself you're just bending them down letting them grow and then when they get how as far as you want to make the back of the chair you just let them grow upright again mm. you just like let them do that and you just move them so it's really actually i don't i don't mind it at all i think it's actually super cool it's very patient which i i appreciate because you have to wait for the tree to grow and get strong enough to yeah create I imagine you could only make a few of these sculptures in your lifetime. Yeah, I, I'd assume so. You might be able well, to start doing a bunch on yeah, a bunch I, of different trees. I, 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 now that I say that, he probably doesn't do one at a time. <laughs> yeah, wait 30 years and then tries luck on the next one. I'm finally done. Yeah, I will now make a now. table. <laughs> yeah. He has to pass these projects on to his children. Right. I think that they're much more similar to the uh, the bridges in India and other places uh, where they use banyans oh, to yeah. grow bridges. And it's exactly the same where the tree or the 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 tree itself will over time get stronger like the wood will get thicker and stronger the what is now just like individual bars kind of of the seat or of the back of the chair Uh those will over time grow into each other and then it'll become like you know a flat surface more or less except it'll be kind of ribbed because there's going to be you know bumps between the the top of a circle and where they touch so, Casey, let's imagine that you wanted to make a piece of furniture out of a tree. What tree would you use, and then what uh, what piece of furniture would you yeah, create? Yeah, this is a good question. So, I love the idea. So, I would probably want to do something that's fun, useful, but not too useful, because honestly, it doesn't look that comfortable. Like, I can't imagine that you know, I want to put it next to a fire and things like that. Yeah. So, I would probably, I would probably grow a tree and... I might do. I would do a strong wooded tree, and maybe like some kind of oak, but a, a medium-sized oak. I would have the bottom, the middle part, grow straight up. Then, when the branch comes out to the right, I would let that grow to the right, and then I'd either take another branch that's going to the left, or take the top one and bend it over. Mm-hmm. And I would bend them so they're growing exactly horizontal, and then they come up to you know after a certain distance i'd let them grow back upright okay as they grow upright they would be maybe let's say 15 or so feet apart enough that you could put a hammock in between them yeah boy and then i would grow them back up to the center and then twist them around or like take several branches to create like a roof over the top of the hammock area. Hell yeah. And then let that grow up and kind of become a big, you know, jumble of stuff. A normal crown. A normal crown. So it looks like I'm sitting in like this uh, almost like designed hammock space with a built-in leafy roof. You know what you I could call what that? A bespoke oak. <laughs> oh, God. Every time, Alex. Or a hammock. Yeah, I'd call it a hammock. Yeah. It's called a hammock. Uh, Casey, great answer. That's what I do. I uh, I would actually grow oh. vines up the side too. Sorry, just to, just to like cover it up to make it look like I'm just like floating within like these vines. Very cool. Anyway, sorry. What would you do? No, I was gonna. I I had the exact same answer. I was gonna say really? I would use a banyan to yeah. make a living hammock. Oh, uh, that would be so cool. A banyan. Yeah, a bannock. 
Uh, and I would uh, <laughs> a hammock and a bannock because it's kind of viney, right? Like <laughs> yeah, those those aerial roots aren't like super uh, strong. Yeah, they don't really do a whole lot. They yeah. they just kind of sit down and then, but once they hit the ground, then they become solid like tree trunks. So I would I would maybe I would maybe have the roots growing together and uh, sort of around each other yeah. to form that hammock. Mm-hmm. Oh, they themselves. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I would just make it so that I could put a hammock in between it oh no i'm turning this tree into yes. a yes okay that's way different that's super cool because then you could even you could design it so that you could like have this little side that's right oh man and that's it probably wouldn't idea. be that hard because it's the roots aren't that woody yeah they they and but they they harden they will lignify and become like way solid once they do that i'll put a cushion i was gonna there. say just put some pillows in there and then yeah. now you're like a persian lord that's yeah. amazing hell yeah yeah that's a great idea. my dream come true yeah <laughs> my dream come true get me my grapes <laughs> call me alexander from now on <laughs> Thank you, Guinevere, for your question. Uh, If you have a question for Casey or I, for some reason, about trees, uh, or a question for trees about Casey, that's an interesting twist. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Email us at arbitrarypod at gmail.com. That's A-R-B-O-R-T-R-A-R-Y pod at gmail.com. And or join us on Instagram at arbitrarypod. Hey, if you want to support this podcast, you can go to patreon.com slash arbitrarypod. Pick a tier, any tier. You can join the uh, Arboretum, get two bonus episodes a month about trees and other related topics, or the Cone of the Month Club, and get a unique die-cut cone sticker illustrated by an independent artist every month in your mailbox, your physical, actual mailbox. They're so beautiful, too. Thus concludes our two-parter on the biggest trees. Ugh, I'm so happy, and everyone now should be able to tell the difference between a coast redwood and a giant sequoia when you're waltzing through. I'm excited. I feel like this was this was good. This was a long time coming, Alex. You almost made a really good rhyme there. I did? Because you said, uh, hope you can tell the difference between a coast redwood and a giant sequoia as you're co- uh, waltzing through they're gonna say california oh jeez, i didn't even think about that I well like, you know i'm just a bad rhymer well this is we bring different strengths to the table i guess that's true you're a natural you didn't even know it yeah wow you're a poet oh end the show thank you so much for listening to this these episodes of completely arbitrary we'll see you next time goodbye au revoir Completely Arbitrary is produced by Alex Croson and Casey Clapp. Our artwork is by Jillian Barthold, and our music is by Aves and the Mini Vandals. And you can support the podcast at patreon.com slash arbitrarypod. And find additional readings at completelyarbitrary.com. Thanks for listening. 